Hello, folks. Welcome back. Uh, people have been asking me for the last couple years, how do I recondition these buckets? So I'm going to show you a little bit today, a project I'm working on. Uh, stay tuned. I'm going to show you a painting, uh, a painting uh, project, which is this one, and then a finished product, which, which is a, a, a powder-coated bucket. I'm going to show you how to prepare the buckets. Here are some of the tools that I that I use. I'm going to tell you about that uh, also. So let me get to it right now. Uh, welcome back. This is Anthony. You see I got this hat on. Somebody told me that if I kept on wearing the Patriots hat, they would leave the channel. And I said, well, go ahead and leave, you know. But uh, they were probably joking. But anyways, it's getting cooler now, so I'm going to be wearing my my yard uh, yard work hat. So let me show you this bucket. Here's the... Uh, this part is almost done. I've got I've got two coats on it. I wanted to show half and half uh, the before. Here's the before. This is what the before looks like right here. And you can see you can see some damage. Well, there's damage up here that was welded, so I'm going to fix that. And you got a lot of scrape marks down here, so I'm going to fix those. And uh, so this is what it looked like. There's a really bad weld here that I'm gonna, I'm going to grind off and fix that. And this was already prepared, all grinded down. Well, no, I shouldn't say grinded. It's sanded with different grits. So you can see how nice and smooth it is now. There was a bunch of scratches in here, and I I taped up the. I taped up the uh, decal, but I'm not done with this yet. And uh, let me show you. I've used a bunch of paints. This is the paint that I really like. It's it's Rust-Oleum two times Ultra Cover uh, paint and primer, uh, Colonial Red. Sometimes I use Apple. <coughs> excuse me. Sometimes I use Apple Red uh, uh, to be brighter. There's different. There's all kinds of different, but this is pretty close to a Honda color. Uh, I've used all the paints I use are Rust-Oleum two times, and I'll put a link to the product in the um, comments of the video. I, I use all different colors: blue, yellow, uh, silver, brown, black. If I'm not powder coating it, and I've used a bunch of different. Uh, clears I found this is pretty good triple thick crystal clear from uh, Krylon I'll put a link to it in the comments uh, please tell me what you use if you've done this I'm always looking for better solutions better products for my clear I've used whole, all kinds of clear coats this seems to be better because it says that it's it's a uh, very thick it's a uh, bright glass like coating superior high gloss finish okay so i just uh this is what i found to be the best out of all the paints that i've used in the past they're really long last and it goes on nice and thick you don't have to put a you don't have to put a primer coat on and so what i do is i'll put one coat on and i'll put one coat on and then i'll look for some imperfections I posted in the, in the uh, Honda Snowblower Enthusiast group on Facebook, and then I'll fine tune it. I'll I'll sand it down, the, you know, because you can see imperfections a lot better after you put a coat on. So then I'll put another coat on, and do the same thing. And it, and it probably takes me about three coats, sometimes four coats, and then a couple coats of clear. Now here's the here's the powder coat. Uh, bucket. I mean, it looks brand new. A lot of preparation. It looks perfect, but a lot of preparation went into this bucket. There were scratches. You can't see any imperfections. I I sanded it down with the different grits and got it nice and smooth. And plus, my the shop that I take the machine to, they uh, 
they put two coats on it, and uh, I think the guy told me like it's three or four millimeters thick. So uh, this is ten times better than paint. It's practically new, new looking. As you can, hopefully you can see how nice it's looking, and this will last. This will last practically forever. I mean, I've I've done these machines like this for four or five years now, and I've seen them in person from the people that have bought them from me, and they still look brand new. And, I mean, they'll still scratch, of course, if you abuse them or whatever. Uh, I don't know if the sun will bother it. I don't know if the people kept it outside. But, um, anyways, this is the way to go. Uh, if I'm making a custom machine, a real custom machine, I will do that. And people are always asking me how much does it cost. It depends on your market. Uh, East Coast cities, uh, West Coast cities, they're different prices. Uh, just just go uh, Google the powder coating shops in your area and bring down some parts and or, or, or send them a picture of a bucket. It says, how much for this? I, it could be it could be $100. It could be $150, $200 or whatever, depending on the shop. I, I do... I give this business a lot of work, so they give me uh, they give me a slight discount. Now let me show you uh, if you're if you're interested in doing this. Let me show you what tools I use. These are angle grinders that I got from Harbor Freight when they were on sale for like ten bucks, and I've had these for I don't know three, four, five years, and they're still working great. You know, uh, they're probably 15 or $20 now. Uh, the reason I get so many is so that I can, so I don't, I don't have to waste so much time switching the discs. This is a, this is a Black & Decker. This has got a, a cutting wheel on it. This is a Hitachi, which one of the first ones I got. It has a grinding wheel on it for metal. Here's a DeWalt, which is really, really good brand. This is uh, this has got a wire uh, a wire wheel on it for scraping, uh, not scraping, uh, cleaning off rust and corrosion, and then I got different grits on each one. This is a forty, so this is one of the first ones I'll use. I'll use a forty or an eighty. This is an eighty. Here's a smaller uh, cutting wheel. Here's a one twenty. Sometimes I'll start with the one twenty. It depends on how many. Uh, how deep the scratches are and here's a here's a fine tuning uh grinding disc and then this one, last one is the 320 this is for the fine work i probably can get a a, a 600 grit uh, flap disc if i wanted to but the 320 works fine for me and then i've got various grits of uh sandpaper and and, and metal sanding cloth all different grits, uh, 80, 320, uh, even some 1,000, 1,200, 2,500. I mean, it just depends on how, let's see, which one is this? There's a 5,000. I don't think I've ever used a 5,000 on a bucket, but uh, that's probably good for cars. But anyways, this is the whole kind of tools I use. Like I said on the, on the uh, group, on the Facebook group, the preparation takes five to ten times longer than the actual painting i mean i can put a coat of paint on this you know in five minutes and but the preparation is the key i mean if you want it if you want it to come out nice you know it takes a lot of preparation and uh patience and then you can have a practically brand new bucket you know when i'm done with this bucket i wanted to show you the before and after when I'm done with it, I'll take some pictures and post it on the Facebook group. And uh, I've posted videos before of these buckets on some of the machines that I've built uh, from the ground up. So thanks for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. If you don't do uh, uh, Facebook, you know, come on to the channel. We've got we've got over 130 videos on. How you can save money on your do-it-yourself uh, maintenance and repairs. So we'll see you next time, folks. Thank you.